Hello everyone, this is Bill Apter. It is January 9th, 2020. Several days ago I received a, uh, a phone call from Mary, the daughter of the great Pompero Furpo, uh, letting me know that her dad was not doing too well and his, uh, his passing might be imminent. And I was so sorry to hear that, and even more sorry today to learn that Pompero Furpo has passed away. Uh, I first got to see him. He, he was the, uh, his nickname was the Wild Bull of the Pampas. And I first got to see him when I was growing up in Queens, New York, at Sunnyside Garden. And I always remember that he was always very vicious. And I always remember his three words he'd always say on the interviews when he was being interviewed by uh, TV announcers uh, Eric Page or Lonnie Starr. And uh, even in uh, Washington, D.C. on the interviews with Ray Morgan. And he'd always say, kill, murder, destroy. And I was terrified of him. Absolutely terrified. Just saw him in person many, many, many times against people like Manuel Soto, uh, Davey O'Hannon, Pedro Morales. And I probably, one of the most memorable times I ever spent with him was on a trip to Detroit with fellow uh, reporter, photographer, uh, George Napolitano. We spent a lot of time with uh, Pompero Furpo and took lots of photos for the wrestling magazines. And I did an audio interview with him. Um, and he always wanted to uh, go out to dinner and have a good time and uh, talk about his family too. He's very passionate about his family life. So what I'd like to do right now in memory of Pompero Furpo, and he always used to say, wait, it's not Pompero Furpo, it's the great Pompero Furpo. And by the way, you know, his one of his other uh, catchphrases, so to say, was, oh yeah. And that, that's right, that is where, oh yeah, got to Macho Man Randy Savage. Yeah, he's, uh, he credited uh, hearing that and uh, doing that, oh yeah, from Pompero Furpo. So right now what I'd like to do in memory of the great Pompero Furpo is run that early interview I did with him, an audio interview in Detroit, which is so, so so much fun. You'll love it. And then uh, an after chat Skype video I did with him, I believe, in 2016. So rest in peace, uh, my friend, and our condolences to the entire Furpo family. And all I can say is, oh, yeah, what a fantastic human being he was. Let's go to the audio and then to the video. Enjoy. All right, uh, I feel like we're sort of in a cage here, not uh, not in a hotel room. Uh, this man has got his room looking like that, and uh, he's known to California fans. What's the matter with you? Um, excuse me. Uh, he's known to California fans as the great Pompero, and back east here, Pompero Furpo. Uh, while... You can adapt yourself to my war. Or you have to talk about your civilized manners and war? Well, sure, it's civilization. You're Is in civilization. Wrong with this? Place where I'm staying right now. Oh well, yeah, it looks like uh, I guess you could say a pig pen, something like that, like a cage. That's As you can see, I'm just ignoring what you try to say. Listen, do you are here just to aggravate me? No, no, I want to find out what your purpose is. What is the purpose of the great Pompero? Very simple one, Mister. I didn't come here to vacationing. I hear this part of the world at the present time is the capital resident center of it. Correct. And I come to compete. Mm. Against who? Against anyone. You mean the world heavyweight champions, uh, Pedro Morales or Dory Funk? Look, let me tell you something about these two ones, because you just mentioned it. I know they must have something to be a champion. Well, both of them do, correct? But you know why they are champion? Why is that? Because they never faced me yet. They haven't faced Pompero Firpo yet. Correct. The great Pompero Firpo, if you don't mind. Great. I'm sorry. Okay, great one. Uh, let me ask you something. Are, a lot of people say that Pompero Firpo is, uh, beside being an animal, he's, uh, I hate use that word, little. 
We're a dog deodorant. Not, we not animals, no. Because we well, are, you are, aren't you? are, are animals. You see, yes. all of us are animals. The only thing, I am the superior one. Ah, that explains a lot. Oh, yeah. Are you an intellectual as well as an animal? The only thing I can say is, I don't know anything. You don't know anything? Correct. Because nobody can know everything. Okay, well, years... Did you get the idea? Yes, I did. All right. I did. Now, years and years ago, we saw you teaming up... Hold it, hold it. What do you mean, years and years ago? Well, about... I'm a very young man. Oh, yes, no, I mean, when you first uh, started in this part of the country, about 1962, when you were in New York, uh, as you will be soon, we hear, uh, you teamed up with a man by the name of the Great Antonio, and the two of you split up. What was the reason for this split? Because in that team only was one great one. Antonio? Me? What oh. are you talking about, Antonio? Are you trying to annoy me? Well, no, no. To aggravate me? No, no, no. It's just that we okay, heard that... don't make mistakes then, mister. I'm sorry. We just heard that Antonio was, uh, thought that he was a little better than you were. Who thought that? Antonio. <laughs> that is his opinion. Mm -hmm. What counts is my opinion. Because if everybody recalls, I was the brain of that team. Right, exactly. Now, let me ask you something, uh, another opinion on something. You used to have a big feud going with uh, Antonino Rocca. Now, he's back wrestling again. Do you think he? in Montreal? Oh, he's staying. Well, you want to get a hold of him? Oh, yeah. Why? For one simple reason. Because he is a renegade. He is a renegade and oh, you're so. not? Oh, no. Because I say where I come from. Where does he come from? Argentina, correct? I don't know. Because once he said he was from Argentina, then he said he was very proud to be an Italian. And now he said, I'm an American. Now you tell me, do you know where I think he belongs? Where's that? To the foreign legion. <laughs> okay, we'll pass that word on to Raka. You know what I mean. Yes, okay. we'll pass that on to Raka. Now you used to, uh, you used to just... Uh, Speak a couple of words of English. Uh, it was, if I remember correct correctly, it was kill, murder, and destroy. You feel you've lived up to your three uh, early English words? I don't need any more than that. That's what you do? Oh, yes. Who have you uh, destroyed recently? We know you've been in California. Uh, well, let me tell you. Three days ago, I had been in that amphitheater in Chicago, and something funny happened to me. You won a match? Well, uh, let's put it this way. My opponent sneak up behind me and hit me in the head with that belt, you know. Yeah, right, the gong. Yeah. And then when I came to the dressing room, I have a funny taste in my mouth. I, is this clean? And you know what was it? What was it? My opponent ear. Mm. That song's good, isn't you it? chewed your opponent's ear off? Oh, and very tasty. How could anyone chew someone's ear off? I mean, you know, what, what type of man would do something like this, Pampero? Well, and then... A great Pampero, I'm sorry. And then, another day, another opponent comes Wait, to me... You, you dodged my question. How could anyone in their right mind... And he said to chew? me... Look at this. Referee! Is this man for real? That bothers me, you know. I didn't say anything. As soon as the bells ring, I run into him, and what a beautiful noise I hear. His back was broke. Uh. Oh, isn't that something? You broke a man's back and you're proud of it? Yeah, and, and you chewed his ear? What a sight when they have to carry him in on stretches. Well, listen, this whole interview is getting me a little sick right now. What's from the you can take it? Well, I can take it, but I've never seen anybody chew someone's ear or break a back and enjoy it. No, we're, we're just going to have to wrap this thing Listen, up. Listen, let me tell you something. Rules, regulations, are for the sissy ones. I wrestle as a man wrestle the primitive way. I don't ask, and I don't give any mercy. Did you get the picture? Yeah, of course. Now, I fight fire by fire. They said this is the jungle law. Have you ever wrestled scientific, clean? What you are talking to. You don't know the These meaning terms of clean. Are from the civilized war. In my country, we learn from the moment that we're born mm -hmm. to defend ourselves. This is the only way that we can survive. That's Argentina, correct? Yes, South America. And you know the question, mister. You see, you can go with a Bible around this business because I'm involved in very dangerous business. Sure, and well, dangerous is my business. Kill or be killed, correct? And danger is my business. 
Okay, well, uh, we want to uh, thank you very much for this way out interview, and uh, we can only look forward, well, I guess look forward or something, to seeing you uh, wrestle Pedro Morales up in New York in a few months. You know something? When I look into this guy, I just recall a big, white rice, you know, a big sack of white rice. Yeah. And you know, rice is very easy to digest. And that is what I still have in mind. Well, you beat him years ago, about 1961 yeah. at Sunnyside, didn't you? Yeah, well, that was a one-side contest. I was practically playing with him like a yo-yo. And he was looking to all the wrestling fans as a Mexican jumping bean. Yeah. Up and down. Well, let me ask you up one more thing, uh, Pompero, before we do leave. I wonder... If you don't mind, please. Oh, I'm sorry. Great Pompero. Great Pompero, Furbo. I wonder, before we leave, if you could just give us your famous kill, murder, and destroy, as you... Uh, I'm sure it'll bring back memories to a lot of your uh, fans. Oh, yeah. Both of them. Kill. Destroy. What happened to murder? Well, you know, lately when I use that term, my opponent gets so scared. He doesn't he show up. making excuses. Uh -huh. I could make it because I have a flat tire. I could <laughs> make it because I have trouble with my engine. I could make it because suddenly I got a hay bag. You know what I mean? So you pulverize now. Yeah, until the moment comes in the ring. Then I do the third word. But shh. Don't tell anybody, because you know, as soon they smell something going on in my mind, all these guys get sick suddenly, and I don't like that. You see what I mean? Well, I'm you getting, getting I'm getting sort of sick oh, with this okay. whole thing. So I would like to thank you very much, and I know uh, it's your pleasure. I know it's your pleasure. It's been my pleasure. Him and Farouk both say this. Well, you see, uh, you can find every day a man like me. Yeah, which combine a man like you or which an animal? Combine brain and muscle. Mm. You see? Okay, well, uh, thank you very much. Great, Pompeo. I careful. said brain. I'm sorry. Don't make mistakes. Bill Apter with the great Pompeo. Correct. And let me give you a few more words to Mr. Morales. Yes, please. If you are smart enough, which I don't believe you are. Stay away from me. Leave that belt. Because if not, you have to leave it anyway. You will become a crippled one. Because I will get you. Morales, and your own feel. Because you see, I know your own language. I know your own culture. And of course, I am far ahead of you. Mentally? Mentally speaking. And, oh, uh, yeah. Okay, I'm sure Pedro Morales will heed your words as soon as we play this interview for him. Bill Apter with the great Pompero Furpo at Cobo Arena in Detroit. Okay, hello everyone. Bill Apter for OneWrestling.com. Where are they now? My goodness, one of, one of my heroes when I first broke in was this bearded guy. One of the scariest looking bad guys they had ever met. And before Randy Savage ever came up with, oh yeah, this is the guy that invented, oh yeah, Pompero Furpo, the wild bull of the Pampas. Welcome. It is such a thrill to see you. Thank you. Where is all the hair? Well... Time comes when you have to look a little bit more <laughs> acceptable in, in society, you know. Is that what it was? Is that was it was. How many, uh, what, what year did you start in the business? It was in 1950. And where was that? In Buenos Aires, Argentina, in the Luna Park. Yes. And you, and were, around, from there, you were around the same time as Antonino Rocca around then, correct? Correct. Well, Rocca was uh, maybe 10 years earlier than me. Okay. He was a great, great athlete. He was my hero when I was there. Yeah. And yeah. then the mentor of him became my mentor to myself too when I come to the United States. And his name was Banca Celestiak. Yes, yes. Mountain Banca Celestiak. And 
Roca came in 19, uh, I believe was 1950 something to United States via Texas and then went to New York. Yeah, what and a then, run, wow. Then the same promoter was interested in me, they sent me to United States and uh, he did. And then from there on, everything become uh, like you know, a success, modesty and aside. Oh, you know? I have no, you don't have to be modest. I mean, your success was incredible. Uh, in the New York area, uh, of course, your battles with uh, uh, I Am Ready for Any Kind of Action, Pedro Morales, uh, your Midwest feuds and partnership with the Sheik. I mean, uh, and I've got to tell you something. Back in those days, somebody like you came out and the fans were genuinely scared. Today they laugh at some of the bad guys, but you had that look and I remember my first interview with you and you looked at me, I had my tape recorder and I asked you what you were going to do to your opponent in Detroit, I think it was Tex McKenzie, and you said, kill, murder, destroy. Remember that? Yes, I remember. Can you still do that by the way? We, we, what, do you, what, what, what do you want me to do now? You, oh, yeah. oh, yeah, wow. Give me some kill, murder, destroy. Destroy. Kill, murder. Pulverize. Murder. Now, I, I, I remember asking you on one of those interviews, uh, you said, kill, murder, pulverize. I said, what happened to destroy? You said, well, my opponents got afraid and they start to call the promoters saying they have flat tires. So <laughs> I remember that. That that was great. What what um, uh, in the great opponents that you had? What what are like some of the great opponents that uh, you remember? Angelo Saboldi. Angelo Saboldi. Yes, still was, alive in his nineties. Still alive. He was a great champion. Yes. In nineteen fifty nine, I disputed the championship with him in Oklahoma. And then was a very much controversial decision, and they brought one of the greatest wrestlers ever came to the professional, and he said he will be the judge on that match. And that was, uh, let me see, the name of the gentleman was uh, very famous from Oklahoma. And uh, uh, Leroy McGurk? For Leroy McGurk, yes. Yes, yes, yeah, I remember, I remember. Yeah. What about the main? Go ahead. Go ahead. What What about your? He uh, was the job in my. Now you you also now what, what I'd like to do right now I'm going to get up yeah. for a moment and I'm going to play you Go two or three minutes worth of an audio tape that I did with you many 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 years ago with you and the Grand Wizard and I just want to watch your face when I play this for you, okay? So. Hold on a minute. Hold on a minute. I'll be right back. Don't go anywhere. All right. Okay. Let's see if we can. Uh, let's see if we can do this. All right. Hang on a minute. Okay. This is Bill Apter. Right now, we're. Uh, I'm standing next to you, you, Bill Apter. I interviewed you in Detroit. Do you remember? Oh yeah. Yes. Yeah, check my credentials. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, let me ask you uh, something, Pompero. Uh, you're reading one of our magazines there. I noticed you've been. Uh, You've been managed by uh, the Grand Wizard in this part of the territory, and yet uh, you've wrestled Abdullah. You, you just, when you mention the Grand Wizard, you have to say the brain. The brain? Oh, yes. Is sir. he as smart as you are? Well, listen, I think you try to be as smart as both of us. I'm not trying to be that. smart. I'm just asking. Are you uh, trying to I'm... aggravate me? No, I'm not trying to aggravate you. I just want to know if, uh, if you think your manager is I just think only one thing. What's that? Keep talking. Can you hear now, it okay? Uh, you have wrestled the Sheik in Toronto and uh, I believe in Detroit. And uh, I wanted to give you some of our uh, our old recording there. But um, uh, tell everybody right now where you're living these days and what are you doing? Right now, I live here in California and I'm enjoying very much my I can say uh, uh, my relaxation with my grandchildren, 
and my, my children too. So I'm very grateful to accomplish as a father, as a grandfather, and as a husband, what any, any man in life wish to be done, you know what I mean? And that was your beautiful daughter, uh, Mary. Um, Mary. What? Mary, Julie, and John. What did, uh, if you could say the best thing about what the wrestling business did to enrich your life, what would you say? What was well, the best part? I am very grateful. I am very grateful to my profession because it gave me the chance to travel and come to the country, which for me was my dream since I was a little boy. We start from this way. My father was a great fighter, and he supposedly had to be going to Germany for the Olympics in 1936. But his name was Kachmanian, and they thought that he was from Argentina, but he was from Armenia. So he cannot represent the country. So get into me, the bar, when he say, okay, if I cannot go to the Olympics, I want to be a promoter, I will build my own stadium. So he did that. And from the age of seven years old in 1937, he put me to be timing the fighters, tell them the 10 seconds to go or, or whatever, black shot or whatever. And uh, from there on, the bug get in me and me. And uh, my father left a big name in the boxing and I'm a Jew. Yeah. Uh, 79 wow. fight and 79 wins, you see? Wow, wow. He was the kind of man that uh, with him was one way only, his way. <laughs> and I, I get respect on that because he said to me, if you want to be somebody in life, stay away from cigarettes, for drinks, and for the easy life. You have to, you have to earn a position in a sport being you very disciplined in your uh, activities. So maybe half for the reputation of my father and half for Banka Zelestniak. Zelestniak said, your place is to start travel away from Argentina. So I say, well, what do you suggest? He said, well, why don't you start from the bottom, go to the two neighbors, Chile and Uruguay. So I accept to go to Chile, then from Chile, I meet friendship with Arturo Godoy, a former contender to the World Championship. Yeah, Cup. I remember the name. Yes, Arturo Godoy, he was a good, good man. And he said to me, you got a good future because you have what nature gave you plus. So I said, thank you very much. And from there on, from Chile, I went to Peru and Peru, then Venezuela, Venezuela. I went to Mexico and Mexico is the place will give me the final uh, step to jump to the United States. The promoter told me, he said, I dislike to lose you, but your place is America. So I came mm. to the United States in 1957. All over the world, all over the uh, world yeah. on, on, on your profession. I was yeah. in five different continents, yeah. 21 foreign countries, and I have 6,881 matches Wow, gee. And I will say, without bragging about it, maybe have only 10% of them lost. The wow. rest was all in a way that was a big how, part. How, how young are you these days? At the time, I was uh, 50, uh, 30 years old. How old are you now? Well, I'm 80, I will be 82 in April. Wow, bless you, bless you. Well, well you yes, there. I feel very well. Yeah, you look I right. follow my father's advice. I never smoke. I never smoke. I never drink. And always training. And I accomplish what I was looking for. What would you like to say and to was, all? What would you like to say to all the people? Eh? We're just about out of time. What would you like to say to all the people that loved you and hated your character as well that are watching here all around the world? I would say that I'm very grateful. In one way or another, I succeed in my intention, and I'm very grateful to the crowd who, like or dislike, still was demanding my action. And to me, that was a big accomplishment. That is why I will say I face, 
a lot of good contenders, good champions. One of them, Danny Hodge, which is a great, great, great champion. Yes. Lutez was another one. And uh, Tony Bourne was another one. Yeah. So Angelo Savoldi was a master of the trade. Before so, we before we go, I'm going to ask yes. you. I'm going to ask you a favor. Okay. Yes. Let's go back 40 years, okay? You're now Pompero okay. Firpo. Ten tonight, you are challenging Pedro Morales for the World Heavyweight Championship. I'm yes. the announcer. Look into the camera. Pompero Firpo, tell us, are you going to beat Pedro Morales tonight? Oh, yeah. I yeah. will do that. All right. That's it's what I what? That's, that's what we wanted to hear. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. We love you, and thank you for uh, being here on OneWrestling.com with us. And uh, it's great to see that you're around. And I am I will be in the San, Fr San Jose, Newark area with Big Time WrestleFest when they run their WrestleFest this year. And I will make sure that I come by and see you. Okay. I will be, I will be the 15, 16, and 17. I will be in Las Vegas, I believe. Oh, enjoy. Uh, Nick Bogwinko. Yeah, Nick Alley. Yes, yes. Yes, correct. Yeah. correct. They asked me to go over there, so I might go. I don't know yet because the 16 and 15 are the birthday of my two grandchildren, and I'm collapsing with that, you see? Well, that's great. That's great. Again, the baby Pompero, we're, we're just about out of time. I'm sorry. Oh. And uh, I just okay. want to tell you that, again, per, on my personal end, I love you. Thank you so much for helping me out back in the days when I was – in my formative days and opening so many doors and anytime I needed you to pose for pictures or do an interview, you were right there with me. Thank you. Oh yeah. You were an asset and you were... Oh.